You've got to stop and watch this video before you head out to go and buy one of Jeep's most iconic models, the 1976 to 1986 Jeep CJ7. Wow, look at that, a Jeep CJ. Hey! Now that's what I call exciting. Bet she's having fun. Boy, is that Jeep CJ rugged. That Jeep four-wheel drive is tough enough to go anywhere. We don't want to see you get hosed. So in this video, we're going to show you the five things that you can look at to ensure that you buy your dream Jeep. What if I was to tell you that the Jeep you're looking at right now isn't actually a CJ7? Would you know the difference? This Jeep built by SFJ 4x4's lead vintage builder, Scott Brown, isn't actually a CJ. But not everyone can do this. Some people will have to buy theirs. And will you be ready? We're gonna show you one recently into our facility that was sold for tens of thousands of dollars with plenty of service records and that may or may not have been a good deal. This is it, right? Now, it's obviously pulled into the rack already and uh, it's just, it looks great. As, you, as the camera pans across it, you'll see that it's a very attractive looking CJ7. And you can totally understand why somebody would be smitten to see this one uh, at the dealership, on the lot, advertised online. And in fact, impressively, this particular Jeep has receipts or documentation, honestly, this thick that accompanies the Jeep. It was advertised as all original paint, low miles, which it arguably is, and predominantly original as the vehicle uh, can be. Additionally, it, it just looks good, right? Again, we're talking about the white wheels. This one's got the, the white best top top, and it's kind of got that iconic orange paint that we see out of the era. Additionally, it is a V8, and it's a V8 automatic. So for the right person, that's really desirable for a Sunday cruiser to hop in, grab the family and go get some ice cream. So what should you be looking for when you're in the market for a Jeep like this? Now in some other videos, I've nitpicked at some very specific things. Now the reason that I've done that is because those little things are oftentimes indicators of the overall quality of how the Jeep has been maintained or cared for over its lifetime. Does that mean that you can, you can continue to pick away at them, you can continue to maintenance it? If you're looking for that fun little project for you and your, 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 your child to work on or play with, that's cool, you can take care of that stuff. But for that average buyer who's showing up and they're looking at it for the first time, they might want to be aware of some of those things that we need to look for. So we look at the Jeep, it looks pretty sharp, Again, I've touched on the tops in the past. The reason why tops are such a big deal to me is that for two reasons. One, a really, really worn top means that it's probably sat outside or gotten, you know, it's gotten weather beaten or used a whole bunch. Tops are very much replaceable, but this original CJ top where it has all the buttons and the snaps, um, has the surrounds, has little rods in here, those are actually pretty specific things. If you were to have to go and buy a top for this Jeep now, you would end up taking all of this hardware and basically throwing it away. You're not just gonna go out and be able to buy this skin all over again. This top actually works really well and is very cool. The tires, if you can see, actually look in phenomenal condition. So if you were to come up on this on the lot, you would notice that like, hey, these, you know, got the raised white letter, very appropriate to the era, looks the part, the tread looks great. The problem is those tires are 20 plus years old. 20 year old rubber. I gotta tell you, I would not feel confident putting my kids and my wife in this vehicle and cruising 45 minutes away to go get ice cream or to go to a Jeep show on those 20 year old tires. Now, I know, I know, everybody says, Neil, oh, rubber was better back in the day. Cool, it was, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. 
not not the early not the late 90s and the early 2000s it just wasn't i i was there i know what it was like these are 20 year old tires so yeah they look great but that's an immediate cost you're going to have to incur in order to keep your family safe when you want to jump in this cruiser and drive as you pan across the jeep looks cool if you look in the interior the interior is actually very nice. Now, what's interesting about this specific interior is that the light color palette is actually really hard to come by. And so your primary aftermarket manufacturers who are supporting the interior and the aftermarket parts as far as Best Top, Crown, Rugged Ridge, Smitty Built, um, and a little bit of Rampage, they don't have the ability to match this interior well. So if you are a person who, A, really wants that originality of the interior pieces, make sure you're picking an interior that's easy to match, or B, that you have access to a good upholsterer in the process. That's really very, very critical. I know it sounds silly, but if your seats are mismatched or your brackets are wrong, um, those types of things, again, are indicators of how well this Jeep has been cared for uh, over the years. So desirable things, just so, you know, just so we've touched on it, desirable things are, this is actually an automatic, so we have a full tilt column. That's very cool. A lot of Jeeps uh, of this era are not tilt column. Tilt column actually makes it more desirable and a functioning tilt column is critical. A lot of people will go in, and in fact, my understanding is uh, our customer who bought this, this steering wheel actually walked or kind of rocked around on the main shaft. And there's some bolts down in here. Now, the issue with that is it will feel very loose and that's problematic. The other thing is not everybody can rebuild the columns in these. And so in that process of going through the column, sometimes, a less skilled or experienced mechanic will actually disturb or break other things in the process. Again, you show up, you think you're ready to buy this vehicle, and now you have incurred uh, extra costs and you know downtime because of something really simple. Or if that is the case and you're willing to take that on, that's an opportunity for you to say, hey, you know what, that steering's really loose. I know that shouldn't be that way. And that's probably one of my biggest complaints is that again, that concept of people don't know what they don't know, is that all too often people go, oh, well, it's an old Jeep. It's supposed to be that way. No, your steering wheel should not rock around in your hand. That's not okay. This is actually a very period correct, very cool Jeep. Um, you know, no fender flares. If you like fender flares, you might be looking for that rubber piece here. Uh, if you're driving this in any type of inclement conditions, this likely is gonna throw some overspray up onto the side of the body. Additionally, uh, you're gonna to wanna to look for rust blow in around the body here and eventually up around the floor. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. You can see with the trim they put on there, I doubt there's huge, massive, big blowout rust there, but we did that back in the day as an industry to hide rust. That's what people did. Now, I don't know that this is that one, but if there is some form of slider or trim or anything like that, you might want to be asking yourself, what's on the other side of that? Spin around to the front. There are a lot of replacement parts available for these Jeeps. So if it's not perfect out of the box, that is perfectly okay, but it's just something else you're gonna to have to encounter. Now, the issue we have right now is this, this Jeep, like so many others, doesn't have the hood prop currently attached. Additionally, you can see how clean this Jeep is uh, or how, it, how much it appears from five, 10, 15 feet away. And if you look at the underside of this hood, you can see just how not clean this hood is. 
And equally importantly, you can see how all of this paint is peeling and bubbled. And you can see all the flash rust and, and some of this raw hood metal here. The thing is, this was a quick spray job at some point in its life um, that didn't take. Additionally, the likelihood is this thing has been running uh, super, super hot or potentially without the air cleaner on while they were attempting to shoot, I don't know, some type of, you know, coolant or coolant, starting fluid or something to that effect. Um, and it's backfiring and so it's kind of scorching the underside of the hood. That's definitely not good. Now this one was obviously sold, uh, you know, as, as original as it can be. When you look on under the hood, big things you're gonna look for on these CJs is how much extra wiring there is. Is the wiring in good condition? We would say that the wiring under this hood is on in average condition. When somebody buys this thinking they want to be able to use this Jeep regularly, uh, you know, as a weekend cruiser or a fun beach cruiser, wiring is going to be your Achilles heel because this is arguably at this point in time, 40 plus year old wiring. And the insulation starts to thin down the actual wire fibers themselves start to break down and deteriorate and that heat under the hood thins everything out and makes it very hard to have good wiring at this point in its lifespan so even if you start using it again there's a good chance that that wiring is going to break down thin out and cause you electrical issues going forward Additionally, the more that you want to use this Jeep, uh, the more challenging it's going to be because it is a very rude electrical system and fuel delivery system. Now that's not to say it doesn't work well, but um, somebody has been touching it for 40, 50 years and have they been doing a good job or are there a lot of electrical gremlins hiding under the hood? With that said, the number one thing you have to watch out for if you're showing up to buy uh, that CJ is, is it a steel body or a fiberglass body? This specific Jeep is really desirable because it is an all steel body. There was a point in the time in the late 80s and the early 90s that fiberglass bodies were, were really important to people and that trend has shifted all back to steel body. So an original steel body is actually still really desirable. And so that's a big, big sell point on this. It's originality was really how it was sold. Yes, the engine is original. Yes, the carburetor, the wiring, the electrical, all that stuff is period correct. But the more that you try to use the Jeep, the more that it's going to show its age and wear. And so when you look under that hood and it doesn't look like that stuff has been well maintained or touched over the last, I don't know, decade or so, the likelihood is that it's going to cause you problems as you continue to drive the Jeep or as you drive the Jeep more. As you go around the Jeep, you're looking for hardware that is correct. Simple things that, that stick out. You can see that somebody has replaced this washer at least. They've concaved and rammed it down. I understand that that's not a big deal, but the reality is that talks again about a little bit of how it's been cared for or maintenance in the process. That's a mild grade washer. And the reality is it's not the highest quality fix that you could use in that position. This is a really fun little piece. It actually is reminiscent of earlier years of CJ's. This would not have been here on this particular, this is a 1978 Jeep. This would not have been here um, in, uh, you know, originally. They did this uh, to match, you know, and give you a spare. They didn't hang it in the back. Um, it's cute, it's fun. It is of course hanging out on the side. So if you are gonna use your Jeep at all as a fun off-road toy, this is a little cumbersome. The big thing is if you actually go and you find the date code on this specific tire, this one is actually like three years older than the rest of them. 
So take those 20 year old tires and push them back another couple of years. You know, look for certain things. Interesting about this Jeep is it actually is a quadra track. So that means it's all wheel drive. It's four wheel drive all the time, um, which makes it absolutely a, a dog as far as fuel mileage is concerned. It's a lot of fun to drive, but that quadra track transfer case presents a couple problems itself. As you look in at the dash, you're gonna look for extra gauges, um, really very stereotypical for the fuel gauge and the voltmeter not to work. That's a completely other story or process. It's how they share uh, electrical, uh, they share a ground and a electrical feed on the backside of the gauge itself. So a lot of people don't understand how that works and therefore have shorted those gauges out at this point in the game. So when you fire up the Jeep, check out those gauges, see if there's been any other gauges have been added. Oftentimes your oil pressure gauge would have failed in the dash and somebody just would have added in just a random, you know, box store, a box auto parts, you know, oil pressure gauge randomly somewhere. Somebody has put in like a 10 disc CD changer in this Jeep. I guess. And also I think was really interesting is really gnarly amps. And I believe there's actually amps under both seats. I'm not sure. Um, I really didn't see the sufficient wiring off the battery in there, but this customer has stated that they do, well, no. In the history, in the vehicle service history, this has actually gone through about five batteries in the last 10 years. We don't exactly know why, but I'm willing to bet that it has something to do with this stereo system. Um, also, the other thing is you can see that full size single DIN stereo. Those were so super popular in the 90s. Um, most of our customers at this point want a more period correct looking stereo face. At this point in time, that dash has been cut to receive that single DIN and there's no going back. So if you are a person who likes a period correct uh, look of the Jeep, that's something you might want to be paying attention to because now this whole panel, uh, that dash panel has to be replaced. Here's the prop rod the hood prop rod riding around in the Jeep. Let's put this thing in the air, take a look. All right, so Jeep's in the air. That's gonna be able to give us as the professionals a better look at it and be able to show you, uh, somebody who might be interested in buying this era of Jeep, better look at what you should be paying attention to. Now, CJs don't have the exact same rust issues as the later model YJs and TJs do. You are, however, going to continue to want to be very aware of this rear portion of the frame. You wanna make sure that that's nice and solid. These actually, this rear shackle hanger bolts on to this location. And so this is all of the structure that this, um, that this rear suspension uh, attaches to. So, you know, if that's roached, then there's nothing holding this spring in, and this takes a bunch of rearward pressure in the process. This is, uh, as we look in on the back side of this, this is again neat because it's a Quadratech. Our differential is actually offset to one side. A lot of the other Jeeps of this era uh, are, can actually be uh, center differentials. Uh, the Quadratac gives this really huge brakes, which is, this actually has the 11 inch brake package uh, when I look at it. You're gonna come in, you're gonna take a look. You know, brake lines appear to be appropriate. Everything seems fine. Looks like somebody's been, uh, you can see the bleeder screw has been done recently. So V8s, people love the sound of these vintage Jeeps. And uh, that's cool, except for when it's not. And this particular exhaust, just is deafening. Um, it's not that fun to ride, a, a, you know, as a family. It's very loud. Uh, it's almost, you know, a little droney. And so when you first listen to it, you're like, cool, V, you know, dual exhaust, V8 dual exhaust. But then the more that you listen to it, you go, wow, you know what? That's, that's not my favorite. So 
you want to be aware of what that is. This is some type of like early flow master. Um, and uh, so right now there's grease jettining out of the, uh, the rear drive shaft. Um, flow masters are cool. Somebody took some time to put this exhaust in here, um, but man alive, it's, uh, it's loud. If you actually look over here, and not that you're gonna necessarily crawl under, but if you're gonna be paying a premium price, you definitely wanna know what you're getting into. You can see all of the wetness around this rear pinion angle, or rear pinion seal. Additionally, up on the exhaust, you can actually see your, your gear oil there as well. So what this tells me is that this particular differential, and actually it's wet all down in through here, this differential is, is, is puking out fluid and the drive shaft's picking it up or this, this pinion seal uh, is picking it up and slinging it up on the exhaust, which obviously is gonna give you kind of a unpleasant smell. Um, and it's up here on the shock. So it's really kind of just going everywhere willy nilly in the process. You're gonna check these. So the, these Jeeps, the frames are actually uh, kind of layered right here. And so you can see all of the stuff. Now, this particular Jeep was sold as never being in the, the never being in rain, um, sleet, slush, snow. It was never in the elements, um, which maybe that's the case, but the frame rails are packed full of, of junk and rust. Now, again, you don't know what you don't know, but if you're going to pay a premium price for a good quality CJ, you definitely want to be aware of this stuff. And that's what's so, so incredibly valuable because it will eventually break down the Jeep the more that you go ahead and use it. So this is the Quadratech transfer case. Um, it's just fluid everywhere. I, I don't know if this thing was undercoated or if it's just leaking. Um, not sure. Uh, have to, you know, see if the customer had paid for undercoating. I don't think they did because these frame rails are bone dry, but everything driveline related is saturated in some fluid. Um, in fact, here's the oil. You can see a big old hanger off of that. So it's all about how thorough you want to be in your inspection of the vehicle and how much money you're going to spend. Right? Many, many people are spending the, those hard earned dollars buying a dream where they see themselves loading up with the family and running down to the lake and picnicking and then driving back at the, as the sun sets or the cool summer breeze. And you want to make sure that you actually get to live out that experience I, instead of just the Jeep sitting in a shop or sitting in your garage full time. We want you to inspect that frame, you inspect that body, you take a look at the top, look at any of the hardware, look at any signs of people who have been um, doing some less than quality repairs. The floorboards on these are notorious for rusting and this particular Jeep uh, unfortunately is not a whole lot different. If we look in from this way, we'll be able to see um, a good bit of rust and delamination there. I understand that that's not a lot by comparison to other Jeeps that we find in the rust belt. And if you're out in, you know, the Southwest, this, you might not have any rust there whatsoever. But again, if you're going to that dealership, if this is a private sale or it's premium money that you're looking to spend, you're gonna to wanna to inspect those things um, to verify, you know, just what condition they're actually in and if it's worth the money. You know, this Jeep doesn't look like it was hard, you know, off-roaded hard, but it certainly is leaking. Um, there's transmission fluid. It's kind of leaking everywhere. Um, again, not typically too worried about rust at the frame rails here on the sides, but up in here typically tends to gather some of the road schmutz because the tires throw it up in against this part of the body. 
Um, and as you come around to the front, you're gonna wanna look again at the shackle hanger here at the front. Uh, also, you can see here that the bushings have been replaced. Um, this is more of a factory style bushing. They were very small. They were typically a little thinner. This is probably an aftermarket at some point. This has some form of polyurethane. Now, the interesting thing is there's actually never sees in there. Um, polyurethane is pretty particular about the chemicals or products that it is submersed or surrounded by. So you want to be aware of that. Um, you know, we're looking for hardware being, well, interestingly enough, we have aftermarket or replacement hardware and bushings here, and we have original, uh, original hardware. So these actually are the original um, shackle pieces on the sides. They just actually blew out this piece here. You can see that this was actually would have been a pin or a rod. They probably drilled all that out, put in their own hardware. And uh, this is the factory style here. Want, you want to be conscious of that stuff. And then eventually you want to come in here. Now, all this steering has already been replaced by a different shop before it got here but you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to your steering linkage and whether or not it has any wear or tear. If you're looking at a Jeep that has a lift kit, you're gonna to wanna to see how they have compensated your steering to your lift kit. CJ7s, or excuse me, CJs and CJ, uh, CJ5s and CJ7s have almost a perfectly flat pitman arm. And so when you lift that Jeep, it increases or makes this particular angle very, very, uh, very large and then makes those road manners terrible. That's kind of the gist of what to look for for buying a CJ7. This specific one uh, was sold again at a dealership. It was sold for a, a premium amount of money. It's not a bad Jeep by any stretch of the imagination, but we want you to be an educated consumer in the process of going out and finding that Jeep that's gonna fit your needs and that's gonna you know, basically build your dreams that you've been planning for, thinking of, and saving up for. So what do you guys think? Is there something here that stood out on the Jeep? Make sure you like and subscribe our channel for more of these types of walk-arounds or how to buy videos. Again, with many of our Jeeps, we're looking at the top, we're looking at the hardware, we're looking for rust, we're looking at wiring, and we're trying to understand a little bit of that vehicle service history. How has it been used, and what was the expectation of that, that party who was selling it? Was it you know, a mule that they used in the fields and, and beat on and put away wet? Or was it you know, just lightly used in the winters, you know, maybe a little summer cruising and, you know, is largely an original vehicle, but needs some love. Let us know, folks. I hope you enjoy this. Make sure you like, subscribe, check us out, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and head over to sfj4x4.com and, you know, see what Simpson Family Jeeps is all about. Until then, Jeep on.